Hello and thank you for joining me. Hope you are all well. Uh, today's video is a revisit of the Get Home Bag. It's been about, I don't know, seven, eight months since my last look as such, and there have been a few changes. Stay with me. My baseball cap is part of my EDC, but it's also part of my Get Home kit. Why? The peak shields my eyes from the sunlight, and this is the UK. We get quite a bit of rain, and because I wear glasses, it helps to keep the, the rain off the lenses of my glasses. It just makes it easier to move about. The other item is my hiking staff. Steel ferrule on the end, about an inch diameter. It's a support whilst walking, checking things. And obviously, if it is a zombie apocalypse and a herd of the undead uh, come towards me in a menacing way, I can wave my stick at them and ask them to go away. The bag itself is 28 litre rucksack. There is an earlier video that I've done on it. All in, this is just under 18 and a half pounds in weight. So it's relatively lightweight, and that's including water and food. So yeah, that's an 18 and a half uh, pound weight. First of all, there is a high-vis vest. Won't necessarily stay there, but if it's a permissive society, yeah, if things are just, you know, I've got to walk, but it's not a zombie apocalypse, and there's vehicles around, it's quite a decent marker to have on my back, yeah, if it's low light, uh, to prevent people running me over. But as I say, that's not always necessarily going to be the cause. So, going into it, I've just released these. This zipped pocket is a map case. Right, this one, because I live in the southeast of the UK, is three miles to an inch. But it's based off the Ordnance Survey, so there's not a lot of detail there. But it covers the whole of the southeast of England. So potentially, if I was well out of my area, and there was a drama, and I had to navigate home, at least I've got some idea of where I am and where I need to go. This one is a 1 to 25,000 Ordnance Survey map that covers a whole area from my place of work to my home. And obviously, being an OS 1 to 25,000, there's a lot more detail in that. And then just in this little pouch, it's a compass. Because, yeah, I know the route to and from work, but that's as a car driver. If I use an alternative route to come home, then it's going to be handy to be able to navigate properly. So that's that pocket done. This side pocket, there is a water reservoir. A water drop survival straw. And I keep half a litre of Lucozade sports drink. It's one of these drinks, you know, if you're a gym bunny or an athlete and you've done a bit of a workout, it's fast hydration, it's not fizzy, it's flat. It's orange flavoured, this one, no other flavours. But it's full of your sugars, your essential salts, and I won't say vitamins, but minerals, that's the word I'm looking for to rehydrate. Now, a get home bag by virtue is to get from wherever you are to home, and potentially that can be over a relatively largest distance. And it's gonna be shanks pony, you're gonna be walking. So what I've done is I took some advice from the UK hiking forums, these people that go out for a week and cover, you know, over 100 miles of hiking. They recommend carrying one, the idea being that if you've got the opportunity, you hydrate as soon as you're about to leave, yeah, so there's been drama, get out of the vehicle, 
I drive, I nearly with the water that I carry in my vehicle, then start the hike home. After approximately an hour or so, consume that and that will rehydrate me. Then once it's gone, I've got another container for carrying water. Unfortunately, Lucas A, for whatever reason, their standard cap fitting is not compatible with the Sawyers or the water straw. So that's a bit of a bummer, I was hoping it would be, but it's not. Hence why I've just put a little bladder in there, just so I can gather water to filter should I need to. So that's in that pocket. Over this side, there is my trusty Crusader cap. And my homemade lid. Not necessarily essential for a get home bag, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. And of course, an Osprey um, UK issue water bottle. Yeah, it's quite old, this one, this is 2010 version. Uh, and that's full of a litre of water. So straight away, I've got a litre and a half of fluids that I'm carrying and the means to filter more if it's needed. My normal daily commute is around 30 mile return journey. So that's 15 mile to work, 15 mile back. So in all fairness, if there was drama and I'm not gonna shelter in place at work, I want to get home, then I've got around a 15 mile walk. And that might sound a lot, it might not to a lot of people. I do not class myself as an athlete or super fit and I think that carrying this way, even over a distance of 15 miles, I'm only going to be averaging about two mile an hour. I cannot see me maintaining three or four, you know, be a power walker and hit four mile an hour. So even at two mile an hour, yeah, that 15 miles is what? Seven and a half hours walking, and that's without having a break. And I would be, as much as I don't want to, I wouldn't expect I'll probably be having a 10 minute break every hour or so, even if it's just to get hydrated, yeah. Could go the route of a bladder, but I don't particularly like them, I don't get on with them. Uh, so that is what it is. So it is potentially, as I say, seven and a half hours walk, and that's without breaks. And that is also without taking into account the type of drama that you're dealing with. Let's be honest here, in the UK, for me to abandon my vehicle and walk home, it's probably a rather major catastrophe because otherwise I'd be getting a lift from someone, I'd be phoning the recovery service, I'd be phoning the good lady to say, come and get me. Yeah, in which case, a lot of this is fairly redundant. But for the big one, if you like, this is the sort of stuff I'm gonna to need to have with me. As I say, that seven and a half hours might turn into, for whatever reason, an overnight stay and a plod on the next day. This front pocket there is a first aid kit this one is primarily a cuts kit so there are plasters wipes uh, the uh, what they call the little strips yeah save you having stitches sutures you know what I mean the little strip wound closure strips there in here, it's a bit of a heavier cut. And then what's also in here, I'm not gonna get the whole contents out, uh, yeah, but it is primarily cuts. There's some nitrile glass just in case it's somebody else. But there is a civilian trauma dressing. So if it's a big bleed, they're there. I've got a couple of cats. And I've got the SWAT and I did think about it and the SWAT was, was originally in the get home bag but I took that out because <laughs> as I say for this to be used it's got to be major and if I'm injured to the point that I need a tourniquet then I'm pretty much pooped yeah so I took that out but there is a cut to keep the idea if I, if I actually decant the vehicle and I've got to use shanks 
that would stay in the bag, that would go in a pocket. A pair of gloves. Just some warm kit. Benny hat and uh, a neck over, a head over, a buff, loads of different names. So a bit of warm kit. There is a BCB stove in here and three cubes of the Fire Dragon gel. I don't mind. It's a bit crap in the winter, but it's usable. Not necessarily required in the get home bag. If it's A to B, trying to get home as quickly and safely as possible, it's not camping. I don't particularly want to be cooking and that isn't really what it's for. If I injure myself or I can't keep the pace up to get home and I have got to take time out to try and recover, if that makes sense, then I've got the, uh, the capability to make a hot drink and I think that's important. Emergency bivy bag, this is a green one because if I am using this it's going to, you know, I, I'm assuming it's going to be bad and perhaps it's going to be in a, a non-permissive society and I'm not particularly going to want to be found or seen. A little hygiene kit. Yeah, there's a toothbrush and some toothpaste and a deodorant and even a shower gel and a flannel. And I know people will say, why? You know, you've got to keep the weight down, A to B. If I'm out and about and something happens, perhaps a vehicle breaks down, it's not the zombie apocalypse, and it's gone into a garage and it's not going to be ready until the following day, so I need to find somewhere to stay, so if it's going to be a travel lodge, you know, something like that, that's what that's for, yeah. It's still civilization, it's not the end of the world, but I want to be able to brush my gnashes and smell half decent. So that's why it's in there. It's only a small one. Oh, part two of the hygiene kit. And this really is just a few, and I mean a few, I think it's half a dozen wet wipes, two packets of tissues, a couple of nappy saps for rubbish or whatever, and there is a COVID mask in there just in case. But that really is it's just if I need to go for a number two whilst I'm on my way back. Right, this mesh pocket. Just an energizer head torch. In this zip lock. There is a small rechargeable music radio. It's just an AM FM. Once it's charged up, there's 15 hours of use. Yes, it's got headphones. No, I wouldn't have them both in my ears whilst I'm walking along because I want to know what's happening. But as I said, if there's major drama and I want to know what's happening, news alerts, etc., when I stop, I can pop one earbud, yeah, into my ear and listen, or I can crank the volume up on it a little bit and drop both of them into there, and the sound will reflect off the sides of the gap and I can actually listen. So it'd be a bit like a primitive speaker. Yeah, but in all honesty, it'd probably be one ear but in my ear roll to listen to what's actually happening. And because that's rechargeable, it's USB rechargeable, and obviously my mobile phone may or may not be of any use. This is the other new purchase that I've got. I've got a power bank that I EDC in my EDC bag that's a 10,000 capacity. I wanted something a bit smaller because potentially, I mean, I've got the option with this to take stuff out of my EDC bag and put it in here, but I wanted this to be standalone as much as possible. And there is an anchor 
and this is 5,000, so it's half the capacity, and the leads are in here. But it does mean that it will charge my phone once, if my phone is completely flat, which to be fair, even when I'm coming home from work, it's usually still on about 70%. And also for the music radio, I can keep that charged up. So, a small battery power bank. Then there's this pouch here. Mini Sharpie, right in the rain pen, right in pad, glow stick, small amount of paracord, a large blanket type safety pin, and a small red LED. So much the same as I could use that high vis vest so I don't get run over. This little LED has got various modes. It lasts about 160 hours or something stupid. So it's solid red, flash, slower flash, and off. And it can literally just be clipped on to the molly. So overnight, people can see me. Or if, say, for instance, it's getting dark, and there's a petrol garage that still appears to have be open and I want to get some water or something like that. I probably wouldn't want to walk in there carrying that and the hiking stuff, etc. Yeah, because it, that will draw attention on me. If there's a drama and I'm actually going into a garage, I would perhaps hide this, go in there, get my stuff and then come away. And if it's dark, I really could put that on and then just aim it down so at least I know where it is. But you know what I mean, it's just an idea. But so it's a kit marker or stop me getting run over. Right, the other thing on this little pouch, it's just in the back, there is a spare AA battery. That's for my EDC torch that runs on a single AA battery. Mini big lighter, a UK version of the Silcock key, and I'll mention that in a moment. Some coins, and just some spare batteries for the head torch. Now on the forums we was talking about water, and I'd never thought of this, and that is sort of churches, graveyards, usually have a tap, yeah, so you can get water. So that's an option. Um, petrol garages, some garages in the UK, apparently, I don't know, to be fair, I don't go there for it, for water. Uh, charge for the water to put in your car if you need to, hence why there's some coins. And this is just in case they've removed the top of the tap, that if my multi-tool can't, this should be able to hopefully open it to give me access to water. So that's pretty much what this pouch is for. And it would stay in the bag. It's not one that I would take out to put in my pocket. There's nothing there particularly uh, that important to me that I've got to have on my person because it's covered. The items are pretty, the important items are covered elsewhere. So that's that one done and that one done. Then we get into the main pocket. There is my own person survival kit. So big drama, two things are really coming out of there. That and that into my pockets. That way, if I am for whatever reason part company with this, there's enough in here to tide me over. Uh, and there has been a video that I released a week or so ago covering that. Just a cheap-ish waterproof jacket. It's supposed to be breathable. You'll we'll see, it's not Gore-Tex. It's just cheap waterproof jacket. A DPM poncho with a quick ridge line, pegs and guys. So I'm going to shelter up if I need to. And again, it's not necessarily essential if I'm only looking at a 
seven and a half hour walk, but if I injure myself, I've got to stay out longer or an overnighter. It might well be handy, yeah, just to give me a little bit of cover so I can try and recover before I press on. Spare pair of wool socks and some foot powder. Look after your feet. Food, again, not necessary, really isn't for a short term. But, as I said, yeah, car's in the garage, it might be late, I've got a room, might not be able to get food at that time, and I want a hot meal, yeah. So I've got food here. There's one hot meal, there's one ration pack in here. Let's just have a look, just run through the contents quickly. So there is a, a folding spoon. Titanium folding spoon. Pepper arm sausage, no refrigeration required. Four protein bars in there. Each one's 200 calories. So to those four protein bars, 800 calories and they are very nice and some cashews Boil in a baggie as I say yeah I'm stuck in a hotel type travel lodge cars at the garage it might be that late that I'm getting into to the travel lodge that there is no nowhere to get food as such. So I've got the option. Or if I'm on the way home, if it's a, just a straightforward, perhaps eight hour walk, I've got something to snack on. If I injure myself, and have to have an overnight or a wait and try and recover a bit, a hot meal and a hot drink, yeah. Temperatures at this time of the year are starting to drop. So that's another method of trying to keep warm. There is, in this Ziploc, a ration pack heater, so I haven't necessarily got to use the stove. Yeah, I can use that, put a bit of water in that, put it in there, put it in my pocket, and it will cook and uh, provide me with a hot meal without having to spark the stove out. And then in there are some coffees, some sugars, and a handful of boiled sweets, again, just as a snack uh, whilst going along. So that's it for the food. I did originally, in my first video, have a snug pack, snug pack jungle blanket in there. I've taken it out. Um, and this is why. This bag, as I said, 18 and a half pound. Yeah, it's ready to rock and roll. And I carry a coat in the back of my car. But at the moment, the temperatures during the day are still around 22, 23 degrees centigrade, yeah? So if I'm hiking with that weight on me, I don't want to be wearing the coat because I'm going to be sweating my cobblers off, yeah? So I then need to be able to carry the coat. So I can put it on there, drape it over or whatever, and it's the extra weight. And then if I stop and start to cool down, I can put a coat on. So, as I said, I had a blanket in there, thinking that for use, but that is only really any use if I'm resting, yeah, or having a, a stopover. So, what I've done is I've put an issue snug uh, softy jacket, thermal jacket in here. It's about the same weight as a blanket, it takes up about the same size as a blanket did, but it's more versatile. It's slightly on the big side, but it, it, it is like beige colour on the inside for desert scenarios. So it's pretty sharp in ship, and then olive green on the outside. And it is lovely and thick and fluffs up. So this to me is more use. So I haven't got to worry about the coat in the back of the vehicle. Yeah, I'm off walking. I'm soon going to start warming up as I'm walking. If you get a bit of rain, got a lightweight rain jacket. Yeah have to stop or shelter in place for a period of time. 
stick the basher up, get the poncho up, put this on. This is probably going to keep me warmer than the jungle blanket was, would. Plus, if it really is that cold, I can carry on moving with this on. Whereas otherwise I'd have to use the blanket like Batman's cape. So that's why the blanket come out and this has gone in. Right, finally, the last item here is right at the very bottom of the rucksack. It's just a waterproof rain cover, yeah. No rucksacks are waterproof, they're water resistant. But important things are in Ziplocs and a rain cover from there. And lastly, what I do like about this rucksack, it's a mar Mardin top or smart. I've done a video seven or eight months ago, it explains who makes the bag. But it's normal, sternum strap, but behind this section, is the belly belt and it's got some pretty good padding for the hips so you can wear it round under your belly yeah sternum straps it's nice and solid don't flop about but for normal day-to-day -day use I keep them in the little pocket at the bottom which just means it's easier they're out of the way and that's it so that's it really, that's my get home bag. You might say, oh, it's a bit lacking in tools. Well, perhaps, but I want to go home. I don't anticipate having to cut through fences, jemmy doors open, abseil off of roofs. You know, I EDC, Swiss Army knife and a torch, all the usual stuff. If you check out the video that I've done on this, you'll find that there's some redundancies with light, there's small multi-tool in here, etc, etc. They really are going to be the only tools that I need to get me home. If I bump into a zombie and it's annoying me, then I can poke my staff up its nostril. Anyway, that's it. If you found the video useful, then I'd love to get a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe, I really would love you to subscribe to the channel if you like my content. And I would love to read your comments. Yeah? What would you carry? What wouldn't you carry? Remembering this isn't a bushcraft kit. And it's not really a bag out kit. It's not there to sustain me for 72 hours or longer. It's to get from A to B as quickly as possible. To be fair, the only thing that would be required to, to, for this kit to cover a longer distance is the ability to hydrate. There's the straw. I've got a metal container, so I could treat water. There's puri tabs, you know, there's, it's the food. Yeah, that's the only thing really, isn't it? I don't need to change my under crackers or anything. I can be smelly for a few days if I really have to. But I would love to read your comments. Have a great day. See you soon.